Hey there, my name is Dev Kake and welcome back to my channel. From the title, you might have already guessed what this video is going to be about. Yes, I made a small online multiplayer game within 48 hours for a game jam. And this video is going to be kind of a devlog explaining how I did it. So in the last week of October, I participated in a game jam called First Flame Game Jam hosted on itch.io. For those of you who don't know about Flame, Flame is a game engine built on top of Flutter. And this game jam was hosted by the Blue Fire team, maintainers of Flame engine. So the timeline for this jam was roughly around 48 hours and the theme was Halloween. There were also three limitations for this jam out of which at least one was required to be followed in the game. But apart from all this, a main condition was that the game had to be made using Flame Engine. Now if you have been following this channel for some time, you might have already seen some of my Flame game development videos. And since I have been using Flame for some time now, I thought this game jam would be a great opportunity to put all my Flame knowledge to test. All this was fine. But the only problem was, in my local time zone, this jam started at 1.30 am. Which means, I wasted a good 8 hours sleeping right at the start of the jam, completely unaware of the theme as well as the limitations. But anyways, I woke up in the morning and started brainstorming ideas for my game. At first, I thought of making some kind of top-down game where I won't have to worry about gravity and physics. But doing this meant I would have to also come up with a backstory for the game and for some reason I just couldn't think of anything interesting. So I scrapped the whole top down thing and started looking for some other ideas. And just while I was doing so, I remembered a game that I recently played called Life is Strange True Colors. In that game, there is a brief section where you get to play a mini live action turn based game. At first. It does not sound fun at all, but after playing it, it became one of the best sections of that game for me. So I kind of drew my inspiration from there for my game. My plan was to make a game where 4 people will join over the internet, with one of them being the good guy who fights rest of the 3 Halloween monsters. I spent the next few hours working on some basic character assets for the game. After finishing 4 characters with only a single animation for each one of them, I quickly realized that I was already 14 hours into the game jam and had not written even a single line of code. At this rate, it was clear that I would not be able to complete the game within time. So it was time to rescope my original plan. The first thing that I dropped was self-made assets, because even after wasting so much time, I was not happy with whatever I had made. Using some free assets from itch.io was the only feasible option. Then next, I decided to reduce the 4 player game to a 2 player game. Where both of them fight till one of them loses all their health. Making a 2 player game seemed less complicated than 4 player. Also, since I haven't made any kind of online multiplayer game before this, I wasn't really sure what challenges I might face. So keeping things simple seemed like a good idea. With these new targets in mind, I created a new Flutter project, named it Halloween Battle and started adding required packages. Flame was obviously the first package that I added. Next, for the backend, I decided to go with Superbase, an open source Firebase alternative. Superbase was kind of new for me as well, but I had read through some of its docs and I knew that it supports real-time database updates. So this was perfect for my turn-based game. After this, I spent some time on creating a main menu, using which players can either host a new game, join an existing game, or go to the character selection page. It was already getting late that day, but I wanted to at least be able to connect to Superbase and host a game. And this brings us to the architecture of this game. So basically, my plan was to represent each fight in game as a row in a predefined table in Superbase. This means, when someone hosts a new game, a new row is created in that table and the primary key is used as the game ID. Once the row is created, the host will wait for the other player to join. And the other player will need to provide the same game ID to join the host. Fortunately, implementing a basic hosting and joining mechanism didn't take much time. So I called it for the day and went to sleep. 
The next day, the very first thing that I did was, I searched for some free assets on itch.io and replaced mine with them. After this, I spent almost my entire day working on the core game state manager code. The main responsibility of this manager is to listen to changes in real-time database and modify the local game state. Apart from this, state manager also takes care of updating columns in the database to indicate player choices, HP and power. So the way this works is, both players play turn by turn and in each turn they can choose from 4 possible actions. Primary attack, recharge power and health, put up a shield or perform a special attack. Depending on the player's choice, the local state manager updates some columns in a specific row in the backend. This in turn fires an update for all the clients listening to that row. And then state managers of all the clients modify their local game state according to the received update. This was supposed to be a trivial task but I still managed to mess it up a couple of times before getting it right. Then I tested the game for a while and realized that once the game ends and players go back to main menu, everything just falls apart. But it was already less than 7 hours for the game jam to get over. And the only thing that I could figure out was this was happening because of navigating between Flames game widget and other flutter widgets. So to fix this problem, I decided to re-implement all the screens as widget overlays on top of the flame game. And man, that was really stressful. Things were breaking left and right every time I changed something. But finally, around 3 hours before the jam ends, I was able to get it up and running. I spent the next hour or so adding some basic particle effect, a camera shake and a nice text animation to display increase or decrease in health points. I also managed to find and add two background tracks for main menu and actual gameplay. Finally, I did some play testing, tweaked some parameters created a page for this game, submitted it to the jam and went to bed. All in all, it was a weekend well spent. I could have never imagined making such a game within such a short amount of time. But thanks to the Blue Fire team, this jam kind of helped me push my limits. Also, all the entries submitted to this jam just proved how much capable Flame Engine is. That being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. All the code for the game is public on my github. I'll put the links in the description. So if you liked the video, do give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing as well. I hope to see you in the next one. By the way, I also managed to win the second prize.